All right, we are here in San Francisco. Thank you, New York and Lee Odin, uh, for kind of passing the ball across the country here. My name is Brian Fanzo, millennial keynote speaker, and I'm your host for the rest of the day. So we're gonna uh, you get to get to join me on this adventure as we move forward. So we're in the home stretch, uh, and I'm excited to uh, bring some uh, fun panelists to you as we move forward. For those, oh, Lee, what's up, Lee? How are you? Hey, Brian. How's it going? <laughs> Thank you for uh, taking the ball and uh, running things in San Francisco. <laughs> Sounds good to me. You did a good job. I, I have to, I, high bar to set, so I'm excited to take it from here. Awesome. Well, good luck, and everybody have fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you, New York. Thank you, guys, everybody that were watching there uh, in New York. And for those that are returning viewers, I want to go over just kind of you know uh, some of the things that you're going to see um, throughout the presentation. So every 30 minutes, we have a new guest speaker. Uh, they give about a 15-minute presentation, and then we're going to hand it over to uh, a couple of panelists, some additional panelists that will join in, and we'll have a 15-minute discussion and conversation, really uh, adding to what we're what you're going to get as far as the presentation goes. So we're going to move on to our, our next presentation now, and we'll kind of get started here um, from San Francisco for the rest of the day. And uh, I'm excited to introduce J.D. Prater from uh, Quora. He's the Quora evangelist. Uh, not only is he evangelist, he's a regular speaker at conferences across the globe, such as Inbound, SAS Star, Brighton SEO, as well as SMX. And uh, you know, 300 million people come to Quora every month to prep, research, evaluate, ask questions, and learn more uh, about the world around them. And for, but you know, not only can, how can that help you, but J.D. is gonna highlight some of the benefits of Quora in his presentation. Uh, advertising, how marketers can boost traffic uh, with Quora, as well as some of their, uh, you know, using it as an additional uh, marketing channel. And then we're going to discuss, uh, you know, more on not only using Quora to drive traffic, but driving traffic with evergreen content uh, with two other special guests. We have Kevin and Vince here, who I will go ahead and introduce with you guys um, after the presentation. So, uh, and we'll, we'll be a lot of fun. We're going to kind of bring them into what we have going on. So uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to JD. Awesome. Thank you. Let's uh, dive right into how we can boost your traffic using Quora. So, give you guys a quick overview of where we're headed. The number two, one and two questions that I get asked is, what is Quora? Why do people come here? I'm going to make sure to answer those first. And then I'll give you guys a really small little playbook for listen, learn, and launch of how you guys can get started using Quora. And then we'll do a quick Q&A with an amazing panel. So, let's jump right into it. So, what is Quora and why do people come here? Quora is a place to share knowledge and to better understand the world. And that's really what's the heart of Quora. It is a question and answer platform. That's how we do it. We're the world's largest and we're the best at it. But what does that look like? What does that entail? Let me show you. People come here to learn about the world. You know, like, what are some tips and tricks for getting bigger portions at Chipotle? Like, I think we all want to know these type of things, right? Some people come on and they just want to share graciously. Here's an example of uh, Jason Limpkin. He's over at uh, Saster and he's a VC. He sold a couple of companies and he's answered over 3,200 questions. That's insane. He's has over 55 million views on his content and he does it graciously. Some people come on just to be surprised. You never know who's going to actually answer your question. So this person asked, what's it like to meet Jackie Chan? And Jackie Chan answered the question. Like, that's insane, right? And so my favorite part of this one is, everybody wants to kiss me, everybody wants to touch me. Guys, when you, when you meet Jackie Chan, please, please leave him alone. Just say hi, right? Other people are coming on to conduct research. You know, like, what are some cool gadgets? They're coming on to kind of crowdsource some information to kind of learn about what they could do on their next camping trip. And other people, like myself, we come on to be better. You know, here's an example of my son, Jude, who's now going to be a year old next month. And during this time uh, last year, we was an open enrollment, right? So we're getting our insurance and we have Jude and it comes down to that dental insurance part. And I'm like, do, do babies need dental insurance? Like, I, I, just, I just didn't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a new parent. So I get on the core, I get three answers really quick. And I think all the parents out there are probably laughing at me uh, because the, the quick answer is no, they don't have teeth. And so now he uh, has two little teeth poking up. So when we do open enrollment this year, we're going to be getting some dental insurance. So uh, the short end of this is 
You're able to like reach people when they're actively learning. And this is a really key decision moment that marketers can get in front of people in, right? So we're always trying to figure out how can we get in front of the right type of audience in the right type of moment in the right type of context. Well, Quora is a perfect example and a great platform for you. And this is across a ton of topics. Here's an example. We rolled up in 2018. All of the questions, they roll into smaller topics. Those roll into bigger topics to get you this information. So this is just from 2018 alone. And I'll give you some examples. Like we're all marketers probably. In the top left corner, you'll see there are almost 30 million followers for marketing. And there were over 362,000 questions asked about marketing in one year. Right? We could even go bigger into technology. 72 million followers, 1.6 million questions asked in 2018. So it's pretty amazing. But it also looks something like this. Anyone want to take a guess? What could this popular, trendy TV show be? Anyone? Anyone? Big spike in April, May? Game of Thrones for all of you out there, right? So what we saw was the Game of Thrones fans flocked to Cora and they wanted to discuss in a question and answer type of format. And that ultimately hit almost 80 million views on those answers just on Game of Thrones alone. And you can see this has led to our rapid growth. We have over 300 million uh, unique visitors coming every single month to Cora. About 43% of our audience is here in the US. And we have almost near parity with the female-male split. And the part that I'm also really excited for is an, uh, reaching new audiences, right? So you might say, JD, why would I use Quora? I got Google, I got Facebook, right? Well, we're able to actually get you guys a whole new audience that maybe not be on those. So and the way to read this is 54% of our audience is not on Reddit. 49% is not on LinkedIn. 39% is not on Twitter. 34 not on Instagram. I don't know who these people are, but they're not on Instagram, right? And then for all of you guys out there that want that desktop inventory, 25% of our traffic is desktop inventory. So if you're out there in that B2B space, I know you guys love that coveted desktop inventory. Come on, check it out. So let's get you guys started. How do we launch into this? I'm gonna give you my uh, favorite alliteration with three L's, listen, learn, launch, and let's jump in because a lot of people want to jump into Quora like a cannonball. They want to come in and make the biggest splash possible and then they end up not quite happening, right? And you end up getting upset or you end up getting uh, a little discouraged, right? So this is how to make a better cannonball. Start by listening. And what does that entail? Come in, ask these questions. So what are people actually saying about my topic? You know, what types of questions are they asking? And then who are these top writers? Who are the types of people and who are these people that are actually answering the questions? It's important to remember that all the questions on Quora are demand driven. These are people literally asking these questions because they want to look and are looking for the answer, right? And it's also important to listen to. Bain did uh, a full study on leaders and it turns out whenever leaders come in and they're ready to launch, they always start with doing some social listening. So there's also proof that you have better results when you come in and you actually understand the platform, you understand the community, and now you can take that information and uh, get started. So get started. Search. Go into Quora. Start searching for some, some keywords that are related to your business. Remember how I told you that we're organized into topics, right? And so you'll get to see a couple of different topics. We have a, a pretty good filtering. So you'll be able to filter those results by the type. So if you wanna look at questions or profiles or answers, you can do it by topics, you can sort by author, and you can also sort by time, right? To me, if you wanna look at the last month, last year, all time, and that way you can kind of get a, an understanding. Once you find something that's interesting to you, start looking at some relevant topics. So here's an example, we're talking on travel. So visiting and travel, you can see here, there are almost 44 million followers of this topic. And then what you're also able to see is larger topics, more reach, smaller topics, a little bit more focus, right? So we have so a different type of flavor for each one. If you're an advertiser that's looking for reach, go with a broader topic. If you're looking for a little bit more focus, go with a smaller topic. And then also take a look at those most viewed writers. We tally this up, and so all the topics there, we tally up the, the last 30 days and who are those top writers. So in this example, we can see here that Yasmin has over 784,000 views in the last 30 days on her three answers. Wow, 
like, good for you. Uh, you got to must have a pretty good following or write some really good answers to have three of them getting that many views. So it's a good way to see our Quora influencers. Yes, I said it. We have influencers, and they look like this. They're sharing knowledge, and that's one thing I really like about our influencers. All right, to so learn. We've listened. Now, what can we learn about this? What value can I add? So when I'm looking at these answers, what gaps are there? Is there different ways that I could answer this one? Or is there something that wasn't mentioned? And then learn what kind of answers perform well. This is what's also really important. What is a good performing answer? There are some formulas out there. Study them. And then what does a good profile look like? There's a lot of different ways to you know, have your profile and how you set it up. And I'll show you guys a few examples of all these. So here's an example. I asked this question. At what stage should a startup hire a CMO, right? This is, a, this is a pretty good one. Uh, Jason Lemkin, who I just talked about earlier, he answered it, and he answered it pretty well, right? So looking at his answer, it's like, well, is there a different way that I could answer this? Is there a different way that I could see that maybe I could uh, provide even more value, right? And that's what's important as well. Look at those uh, high-performing answers, right? So we talked about a lot about traveling. Look at what they're doing, right? We can see in this example, they're using bold to call out. They're using bullets to call out. They're, doing, they're breaking up their text really well to make it really easy to read and to skim through. And those are just a, a few examples of what a high-performing answer could look like here. And then we talked about our top writers. So we talked about our most viewed writers. Now going a step above that is our top writers. It's our top badge that writers can get. And take a look at their profiles. You'll understand how they are writing about themselves to look for inspiration. And always, don't forget the CTA and some links in there. This is the place, marketers, to put in all of those links. This is totally fine. It's not spammy. It's not salesy, right? And then even have like a, a really nice CTA. You can see here with Rod, CEO of Law Trades, he has a book some time right here. And it takes you right into his calendar and you can book a time with him to discuss more. So you've listened, you've learned, now you're ready to launch. Let's, let's go make some cannonballs, right? How do I join this conversation on Quora, right? How do I write my first answer? And then how do I promote my business? So you can start. If you don't have a personal profile, this is the first place to start. You'll want to start over there on go to Quora.com. You'll want to create a profile. You can also create a business profile. So these are in beta right now. If you go to Quora.com slash business, you'll be able to access this and to create your business profile. Again, you'll need a user profile to create a business profile, and you'll be able to jump into this conversation and answer as a brand. And there was a really good study that was done by Time back in 2017 that was talking that 92% of people believe that brands have expertise on topics that can actually add value. And this is what's also important is to understand is don't be shy as a brand coming into Quora. People do want to see and hear from you. This is why you exist, right? This is, you have all this content on your website. This is a great way for you guys to distribute, get some more eyeballs on that content. Now, you've answering some questions. Answer the question that's asked, right? This is another one. Don't sell, provide value, right? This is the key. Marketers, provide value, provide value, provide value, right? We always want to come in, we want to sell, but at the end of the day, people want the value. So I made a quick checklist for you. We'll make sure that this deck is available for you guys to take a look if you don't have time to get all of these. But the couple ones that I wanted to call out is being consistent is really important. So it's better to write five days of answers than five answers in one day, right? So think about your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Facebook. You're not going in and posting all on one day on Monday. No, you're, you're, you're posting every single day. And it's the same thing with Quora. You, that's how we can help reward you with that distribution and that organic reach. Uh, some other things that we talked about formatting. We talked about uh, one here is using images and videos when helpful. I think that's also really important whenever your answer doesn't have to be just text. Make sure you're using images and videos in there as well. Put in that YouTube link in there. Get some extra views on your YouTube videos as well. And then why advertise on Quora? So we talked a little bit about this. We talked about our leaned in audience. They're actively learning. They're looking for solutions. This is a great way for you to then pair your solution for people that are looking for an answer. And that's that high intent audience that we see a lot of. It's also the right context. When we talk about relevancy, we talk about context. That usually means an efficient and an effective message. 
So advertising on Quora just simply makes sense. So let me give you an example here. This is uh, DuckDuckGo. We love DuckDuckGo. They're in a, you know, trying to disrupt the big 800-pound gorilla in the room. There's the uh, search engine. They have, I think they have like a 1% market share, but that's okay. They're out there, they're trying. And they came to Quora and they said, hey guys, like we realized a lot of conversations are happening about DuckDuckGo and about Google on your platform. Like what, what should we do? How can we do it? And so their CEO just actually came on and he starts answering questions and he starts engaging with the uh, audience on Quora about what is DuckDuckGo? Why is it different than Google? What do we do? Like what do we stand for, right? And you can see here he has over 180 million views on his answer. Like this is 180 million, right? And what he ultimately did was, wow, we got great reach, we're seeing really good stuff. We're gonna lean into this and we're gonna accelerate our buzz using promoted answers. So you can take any answer on Quora and you actually put money behind it. So even for the user generated content, people are reviewing your website and talking really good about you, you can promote that. You can also promote your own content as well. So this is really good for if you need to like, need more real estate to take up, right? Whenever you talk about your product. And ultimately, this is uh, their results so far. 1.4 billion views on their answers. They have a 9% click-through rate and they've uh, gained 74,000 new followers because of this. So really cool to see uh, DuckDuckGo and their CEO really coming onto the platform and making a huge splash, a real cannonball, right? And this was their general uh, playbook. This is the, fly, the flywheel that we've kind of all talked about. So listen, learn, launch. It's coming in. It's joining the conversation by sharing your knowledge, right? Engaging with high intent audiences and then establishing yourself as a thought leader and as a trusted reputation and then accelerating all of that with ads. So we're gonna recap now, getting it in sync with the Quora community. We talked about listen, learn, and launch. You can do all this right here. And of course, I've got a lot of resources for you over here at quora.com slash business. You'll be able to go in, see some guides, some success stories as well. So I'm JD, a Prater as well. You guys can reach out to me at any time here on Quora. Uh, here's my email, also active on Twitter. But let's jump into some Q&A. We got some really smart people here. Sounds great. Thanks, JD. I appreciate you doing that. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and introduce uh, our two other gentlemen here. We have uh, Kevin Indig, the VP and uh, SEO and content at G2, runs organic user acquisition uh, at G2 and mentors startups in growth uh, and the German uh, accelerator. And then we have uh, Vince Magalain, is the senior marketing manager at Limelight and helps to build and continuously optimize online productions and services and sales for lead generation. And so I know a lot, JD kind of talked a lot about um, not only establishing thought leadership, you know, kind of getting your your content in front of your audience. Uh, I would love, you know, I was, we'll you know start here with Kevin. I'm curious from your standpoint, you know, when you're thinking about how you know thought leadership, how do you use thought leadership to attract that high value audience? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, and first of all, I want to point out how meta it actually is to do a Q&A about a Q&A platform. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just as an aside, uh, no, but uh, to, on a serious note and coming back to your actual question about leadership on such a platform, I think it is a new opportunity for marketers to engage with a highly valuable audience and to create a presence on a platform outside of uh, Google or other social networks. And the really interesting part about Quora, as you already explained, JD, uh, is obviously the question and answer component, which is so substantial to the human experience. So I'm not going to make this too philosophical, right? But right. questions are at the heart of everything that we pretty much do. And establishing yourself as somebody who can deliver really good answers is highly valuable for thought leadership in general. I love that. And what are your thoughts? You know, I think, Vince, when you're thinking that same kind of play, is when you're, what's your take on that? Um, as far as thought leadership, yeah, I and mean, kind of using thought leadership to find that you know that direct audience that you're looking for, right? Yeah, so I mean, the way that I, I've usually attacked Quora is I, I'm promoting content that I've already created a lot of the time. So like I'm creating a thought leadership piece for my company Limelight or you know wh whichever uh, company I'm with at the time, right? Um, <laughs> and we. I mean, what we really want to do is answer the questions that are on Quora in the right categories uh, for that that blog post that I've created. So I've been able to drive a ton of traffic to blog posts that then, you know, the blog post then goes to, 
you know, usually a landing page where you're actually selling a product. So it really is a learning experience where like the person's going to find you on Quora. The thought leadership part of it is like it, it really is kind of like getting information from a third party. When you go to Quora, it doesn't feel like you're being sold. Um, and then when you go from Quora to a blog post, now you're getting closer to that brand and what they're selling. And, you know, if you really find what you're looking for, there's a good chance that you're going to get a conversion. Sweet. So I think we're going we're gonna to jump in here. I'm going to jump back into uh, get our, one of our questions from our audience. And I know we have uh, one of the questions that came in. Uh, you know, and thank you, everybody that's out there watching live. Uh, we, we do appreciate that. Um, we, one of the questions came in and said, how can we see content related to our local market? So I think that's kind of in, in the core sense. But I'm curious just from a standpoint of your thoughts on uh, you know, if you're because we're, we're talking a lot of it uh, outward. What's the if you're looking for content in your local market, what's the kind of the advice you have there? Oh, that's a really good one. Um, I mean, being sponsored by SEM Rush, I would highly encourage you to use SEM Rush's tool, right? I think they do a really good job of understanding the Quora platform. So go in, you know, you can put in your dom the domain, Quora.com, you can put in your keyword, and we'll spit out, uh, I said not we, they will spit out uh, <laughs> some, some questions uh, that Quora ranks for even organically. So you can even start there within your local market. Um, so that's probably where I would start. We don't uh, have filters around like country or like state for those types of questions, but that would be a key word that you could type in to better understand within there. So. So, uh, Kevin and Vince, uh, you know, a couple of the questions that came in from our audience that are out there watching are really like, how are you de deciding between something like Quora or Reddit? Or where are you focusing your kind of attention when you're thinking about this kind of answering questions thought leadership? I'm curious how you guys made that kind of decision on where you're focusing and maybe why. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I'm glad somebody asked that because it falls right into my avenue. Uh, at G2, we, I uh, run a team of about 30 marketers. We have about 25 writers. We have a lot of content out there. And so I'm actually not doing the technical execution on Quora. Uh, I have a specialist uh, whose name is Bianca Pizarra, and she does a great job in interacting with the audience on Quora uh, and also promoting some of our content there. Now, how do you make the decision how much time to spend on it? If you have a large team, I think it's it makes a ton a sense to have one fully dedicated person because it is a platform where you need to engage with the audience and cannot just simply offload your content. I think a much more applicable use case is where you have a team of one to five marketers. And even there, I think it is important to have at least a little bit of engagement and content posting on your roadmap to be done every day. So JD mentioned that the algorithm um, uh, supports consistency and rewards that. And so that's where I could see that at the minimum scale, you know, the thing that you do, you want to do at a minimum is every day just engage a little bit, maybe write one answer if you can start with that, and then obviously measure your returns. And that's where I really loved your cannonball analogy, right? Like I first would want to fire a single shot in that direction and see what comes back. And then as soon as I see higher returns, I'll fire the whole cannonball. I like that. What about you, Vince? I mean, so one thing that uh, I've found that takes a lot of time is finding the right questions on Quora to answer, right? So, I mean, if you could find a question where there's like a seven to one ratio, where they're like seven to one as far as followers to answers. And I mean, there are a lot of answers and a good amount of followers, right? So say there's a hundred, you know, 700 people following a question, but there's only 100 answers. There's like a really good chance that you could get you know, a, a viral answer on there if you do a good job and answer it correctly. Um, let's see, what, what other part? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too, like from a standpoint of selecting Quora versus another platform, or when you're, when you're thinking about that, how do, how do you approach that when it's, you know, hey, I'm gonna focus my team or my time right. on that. What, what, would you, what, what kind of makes you lean the decision one way or the other? Right, right, so I mean, with anything with marketing, I, I do a lot of testing, right, so, uh, I mean, with uh, a company named Rebrandly that some of you out there may know, I, uh, you know, I started answering a lot of questions on Quora before Quora became a very large marketing channel. Um, and I mean, what happened was we saw a ton of traffic starting to come from those Quora answers, and uh, we got a 22% uh, conversion rate. Well. from Quora. So, I mean, we just kind of doubled down and did exactly what you guys are talking about, which is, you know, after every piece of content that we created, we would answer five to 10, 15 Quora questions around that topic. And I mean, we really actually grew an entire brand from scratch just doing that. 
And, and we have some questions kind of coming around, like not only that idea, right, driving traffic, but I'm curious, um, the demographic question's been asked a couple times, right? I think we, I, I always laugh at this as a marketer because you, you hear someone's like, oh, we reach Gen Z and we use Snapchat and TikTok. You're like, well, that's not exactly the case. I'm curious from your both of your guys' use cases, uh, I think we, we know what Cora would say. I'm curious from your standpoint, what's the demographic of that average user that you guys are seeing that not only are driving traffic, but probably converting? Yeah. Do you, do you want to start? Sure. Sure. I found that like okay. So right now I'm selling more like enterprise level software. Um, I, I find that that like dem like if if you're trying to sell to an audience uh, like that core might be a little tougher. But if you're like one thing you guys talked about earlier was how many marketers are on core. So like marketers are always looking for new tools to use. I mean, if you want to put a marketing tool out there, uh, I think the digital marketing demographic is uh, huge for Quora. I mean, probably why we're all talking about it right now, right? Uh, I, I, what are your thoughts, Kevin? What, what is the demographic you're seeing? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, um, a bit of a tricky question that needs a bit more context. What I see a lot is that, first of all, you might want to check your web analytics to see what the actual demo, um, demographic of your audience is. And then number two, I think it's still not the right indicator for the decision to be on Quora or not. I would much more look at something like um, the questions that are actually being asked and how they fit to your target audience. And then also the real estate that Quora might take up in the search results, right? So if I, uh, for example, um, target a very narrow audience but know their exact questions, then I would much rather look at how much activity there is in Core around that question and how well Core ranks on search engines like Google to gauge whether I want to invest or not, rather than saying, oh, my, my age demographic is probably X because that's a moving target. Right. So, and I think to kind of wrap this one of the last questions we have here from our audience, uh, from Chad Crabtree. I think we, you know, covering that demographic and that side, you know, what what is if you had a pick, is it brand awareness, thought leadership? Where do you see as that like, maybe number one value prop besides the conversion that you're getting from a platform like Quora? Yeah, so I, I think uh, certainly brand awareness is a point and thought leadership. I don't think it's a performance channel necessarily, but I would still test that, right? There's a, it's a very broad assumption. We have 300 million people out there. I think there is a play where if you run some highly targeted ads that you might actually get a performance component out of it. But for us, it's mostly a social channel where we engage with our target audience and where we try to provide value to them and to uh, divert some of the traffic back to our side. And Vince, what about you from a standpoint of that, that idea? Of, where do you see that most value? Right. I mean, it really is a, a, a thought leadership uh, piece for me. Like, I, I've used Quora to drive a ton of traffic. So, I mean, like, traffic more than anything is where uh, I, I've found the most usage uh, out of Quora. Yeah. So this is great. I, I love the, the discussion. I think there's a lot. This is really, you know, not only valuable in the sense of understanding Quora, but even this concept of marketers asking questions or answering questions, right? Let's yeah. let's be real. That's where we're in the game for. I don't think anyone's ever complained that we solve too many problems or answer too many questions. <laughs> uh, we, they do say we sell too much or we market too much, right? Like that's a that is a, a given fact for sure. So uh, thank you, JD, for the the great presentation, and Kevin and Vince for joining us uh, on this panel. You know, we have a, a lot of great conversations happening for you guys uh, over the rest of the day. Like I said, I'm going to be here with you guys. So make sure you're using the hashtag Global Marketing Day uh, over there on Twitter and on all the other social channels. Include your questions here uh, down below, and we'll make sure to include them like we did uh, with these gentlemen in this uh, panel. So uh, with that, thank you guys so much for, for joining us, and that was a lot of fun.